Hi everyone. Welcome to our lesson on finding the compound probability of events using an array. For today's lesson, you're going to want to have some paper and pencil and um, whether that's loose leaf paper or your math notebook, uh, you definitely are going to want that. Some of you may need a calculator, but you may not. If you need to go gather up your materials, please feel free to pause the video at this time and get what you need and you can hit resume as soon as you're ready. So you might be asking, what is an array? Well, an array is an arrangement of objects, pictures, or numbers in columns and rows. We're going to be using arrays to help us calculate the probability of compound events. Okay, we're going to take a look at this sample problem. In this problem, spinners A and B are both spun. On each spinner, the arrow is equally likely to land on any number in the spinner. What is the probability that the product of the two spinners numbers is even? Right now in your notebook or on your paper, please go ahead and jot down these spinners, copy them into your notes, and then we're going to take a look at how to put together an array of the possibilities. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so an array is kind of like a table um, and across the top I'm going to list one a compound um, event is when more than one thing is happening so the first thing that is happening is we're going to spin spinner a okay so I'm gonna put the things that can happen on spinner a across the top of my table and the things that can happen on spinner B is the second event I'm going to put that over here on the left hand side. Okay. Now, when I spin spinner A, there are four things that can happen. I can land on a one, a two, a three, or a four. Okay. Now, when I spin spinner B, there are only three things that can happen. I can land on the one, the two, or the three. Okay, so my array is going to look like a grid. Notice that in this problem, they are asking, um, what is the probability that the product of the two spinner numbers is even? Okay, so we need to remember that um, the product is what happens when we multiply two things together. So um, we list the possible things that can happen with spinner A and the possible things that can happen with spinner B on the top and the left hand side. What happens when we multiply those things together is what's going to be inside of our array. So the product of one and one is one. The product of one and two, one times two is two. The product of one and three is three. The product of one and four is four. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing with if spinner B lands on two, what's the product of landing on one with spinner A? Two times one is two. Two times two, four. Two times three, six. Two times four, eight. Okay, spinner B, if I land on a three, three times one from spinner A would be three. Three times two is six. Three times three is nine. Three times four is 12. So that's how we put together our array. The array actually gives us all the possible outcomes that can happen when we spin both of those spinners. Now we're gonna use that array to help us find the probability that the product is even. Okay, so now in my array, I'm gonna circle all of the outcomes that are even. So two, four, two, four, six, eight, six and 12. So the probability that our product is even is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight ways that can happen out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 possible outcomes. Okay. If I simplify that, both of these are divisible by four. So the probability that our product is even is going to be two thirds.
Okay, let's take a look at one more problem. This time, let's imagine we are throwing two dice. This is considered a compound event because one, more than one thing is happening. Okay, so the first event would be throwing the first die and the second event would be throwing the second die. Let's take a look at the problem. Two dice are thrown simultaneously. Use an array to find the probability that the sum of the points on the two dice will be seven or more. Okay, so again, that first event is what can happen when you throw the first die. Well, we all know that when you throw a die, the things that can happen are you can land on one, two, three, four, five, or six. Okay, now the second event is gonna be over here on the side, and that's gonna be what happens when we throw the second die. Okay, so when the second die could also land on a one, a two, a three, a four, a five or a six. Okay, now, oops, I should have put this one down a little bit lower than this guy. Okay, now, in the problem, they asked, what is the probability that the sum of the two die will be seven or more? So this time, in the middle of our array, we're going to need to add up the two dies total. So if I roll a one and a one, the sum is a two. If I roll a one and a two, the sum is three. One plus three is four. One plus four is five. One plus five is six. One plus six is seven. Now I'm moving on to the twos. If the first die is a one and the second die is a two, that's gonna give me three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Here, three plus one gives me four. Three plus two is five. Three plus three is six, seven, eight, and three plus six is nine. Four plus one gives us five, then six, seven, eight, nine, and four plus six is 10. Okay, when I roll a five and a one, I get a sum of six. Here is seven, eight, nine, 10, and five plus six is 11. Six plus one gives us seven. Here's eight, nine, 10, 11, and six plus six is 12. Okay, my array is complete, and now we're gonna use that to calculate the probability that the sum will be a seven or more. So what I'm gonna do is circle all of the options that show that the sum was seven or more. So here's a seven, 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 seven. All of these to the right are gonna be higher than seven, so all the eights, all the nines, all the tens, all the 11s and the 12 are all going to be seven or more. So the probability of getting seven or higher, that will happen if I count all of these up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 options that are seven or more out of, if I count up all of these and find how many um, possible outcomes there are, there are 36 outcomes. Now, both of these are divisible by three, so I'm just gonna simplify. And the probability that my sum will be seven or higher is seven twelfths. All right, guys, you should have enough to, to be good to go and go ahead and start your practice work. Have a great day.